Hey friends, welcome to another Transformers review, and I finally got my hands on a Transformers Siege War for Cybertron COG. So quite a few of you let me know that this guy was coming out. Perfect addition for the Titan Fortress Maximus released a few years ago that I did a review for, and he is available on BigBadToyStore.com. So just a quick look at the box before we open him up. It's a really nice one with this sloped design and some custom box art on the side. And we are getting to the levels of original 80s G1 box art. That's some really nice looking art there. Some on the side as well. This really reminds me of the artwork that used to be on the back of G1 Transformers. Really dramatic, serious, beautiful looking artwork. And a couple pictures on the back of Cog in robot mode. Some of his uh, accessories, his combined tank mode. And Cog is a weaponizer. So he is not just a robot and a transformer and a tank, but he is able to be added on to other transformers, uh, pegging his parts onto the other transformers. So I don't actually have any other Siege War for Cybertron Transformers, but I'll be able to try out his weaponizing gimmick on a few of the other Transformers I have. So let's open them up and see what's included in the box. It's really nice backing here. It's beautiful. We get Cog himself securely held in place with this plastic shell as well as some really nice instructions too. The quality of these is really good. If you are a paper aficionado. And I like how they fold out. Again, this is all very nostalgic, very similar to the original Transformers. Having it all fold out like this. Very cool. And it's nice that once you get COG out, you can close the box back up. And after you're done playing around with them, if you think he looks better in the box, you can put him back in and stack these up on a shelf and have that toy store look for your display. So here is Siege Cog, and first impression is I love this guy. He looks fantastic. When Fortress Maximus first came out, the first thing I said was, wow, he looks amazing. But I guess the second thing I said was, where's Cog? Um, to me, it's not just important to... Uh, re recreate, reissue, upgrade these old characters and have them look the same just with better sculpting and detailing. Um, certain aspects also need to be carried over like Fortress Maximus needs Cog and Cerebros and Spike. Metroplex needs Six Gun and Scamper. So having this guy missing, it really, it felt like a cost cutting measure by uh, Hasbro and I'm really glad that now a few years later they have included this one. Uh, really beautiful silver paint job here. I'm going to bring out his original version to give you a comparison just to show you how true they have stayed to the original. So the original style of these um, cannons or whatever you want to call them uh, has been retained with these guns up here and then he's got these this kind of high collar I don't know what you would call it but uh, it carries over onto here right down to the wheels on the sides and he's also got that is really cool the uh, tank treads are carried over on his feet and the blue is I'd say almost a perfect match it's a different plastic, but it's very, very close. And then the head was really nothing to write home about on the original one. There was no paint there. It's surprising that they didn't even bother to add some red paint for his eyes there, but uh, pretty similar head sculpt there. You got a pair of cogs staring at you. So I really like that. And then the gun is... Actually, when I first saw this, I thought that it looked more like 
the original Cerebros' gun, then the original Cog's gun. So I'll just line these three guys up, and you can decide for yourself, but I think that's more of a, a Cerebros look than an original Cog look. So just for a quick little size comparison, to show you how big this guy is, he's, he's yeah, about the same height as the original land. Again, just maybe a tiny bit shorter than the original Cerebros. So he seems to be more in scale with the G1 Fortress Maximus. One of the things I've heard about this guy is that the uh, tolerances on his guns and his fists varies. Uh, so I actually got really lucky. These guns aren't falling out and they fit loose, but they fit about the same in each fist. So see that? That's pretty snug and that's a little loose. I do find that it feels like they're almost tapered, even though they're not. They don't look it. So if you just pop it in and then give it a push, that'll actually make it a little more snug. This one, this fist is a little more snug than this one though, but I think I got lucky here with the tolerances. Let's talk about his posability, his articulation here. He uh, does not have any fist articulation. He does have an elbow swivel and full arm rotation and the shoulders, I guess that could be, I'm trying to move it in this joint in here, which isn't moving. I guess that could be considered a shoulder joint. No across chest reaching uh, head. Doesn't have any up or down. It does move left and right all the way around. And let's see. He does have waist articulation. The first turn has a little bit of a click to it, so it feels like, does he actually move? But he does, and we've got a part popping off here, which is part of his weaponizing gimmick. So he's got that great hip articulation, pretty tight. And you can do the good, good old King Leonidas Spartan kick pose. Fantastic knee bend. That's great that this part of the leg actually sinks into that. I guess that's part of the transformation too. And these ankle pivots, which a lot of the new Transformers have. The uh, Combiner Wars Constructicons, which I recently did a series on, have them. So COG seems to be a common thing with a lot of these new Transformers. A lot of them can do these splits. So that's really, really impressive. Lots of flexibility in the hips. He's got some really great posing potential. Awesome looking action poses. You can do with this guy. But one thing I am noticing as I'm posing this guy is the uh, joints do tend to pop off. Some of them a lot easier than others. This this particular leg comes off really, really easily. But since I don't play with my toys much, I, I mostly just pose them and let them sit there as display pieces. Uh, that's something I can live with. And I couldn't do a Siege Cog review without pulling out the gigantic Fortress Maximus that he's going to go with. So again, the colors are a perfect match. Blues are uh, almost exact. And I like how he sizes up with this giant Titan. I think they look great together. So this particular Fortress Maximus has had a few upgrades since last you saw him. I've got some of these uh, add-on wrist blasters. Got him a new cannon and the waist blaster. And now, He's got himself a little cog and just a simple pose like this shows you how important all of that posability in the legs and in the ankles is. You can actually perch him up top on Fortress Maximus's shoulder just hanging out and watching 
This guy's also had uh, the head upgrade, replacing the black parts with uh, gray parts. And he's not a floppy mess either. You can kind of shake this guy a little bit and he's not gonna tumble off. He's not gonna fall apart. He's sturdy enough. The original Cog's transformation was incredibly simple. All you had to do was remove his arms, plug them into the top of that, separate that, and I don't think they actually told you what to do with this, but I stick it back here so that at least there's something with this mode. Other, It's just supposed to be a tank, which seems so lazy and simple to me, so just by sticking the cannon in here, it gives him an extra cannon that's slightly posable, a little bit more uh, elaborate. So to transform Cog, you remove his guns and you remove his arms, which I like. Now, that might be considered parts forming, but when an original transformer gets upgraded, I appreciate it when the transformation is similar to the original one. So that gives me a good dose of nostalgia having this brand new, amazing looking, updated uh, cog that has a similar transformation to the original one. And the next step is we can separate the uh, this part from this part. One of them's gasket, one of them's grommet. Uh, and when they combine, their combined mode, mode is cog. So again, this is very similar to how the original one separated right down to this one feeds into that one the, the same way so that's really cool too one thing i don't mind is the extra step they've included to hide the head so on the original gasket gasket's head was just always there even in vehicle mode but for the new siege gasket you just turn his head around um, and then flip it back in to hide it. So I really like when heads are hidden in the vehicle mode. And then you just take his arms and you stick them in the top holes this time. And that's a little bit of a tight fit for mine. It's too bad that the fists don't swing in like on the uh, Constructicons that uh, I just did the Combiner Wars Constructicons but you just pop them in the top and there's a lot of variants here you can move things around you don't have to follow the official instructions or instructions from any youtuber reviewing these you can do whatever you want but I like the original look and whenever I'm uh, getting these upgrades, I, I want to recreate that original look as much as possible. So because these cannons on the original gasket go the length of the vehicle, I'd like to recreate that with the new one. So that right there is a look at Siege Gasket with his original version of Gasket. And the silver paint is so much better than the original dull gray. But really nice job on that. Really captures the look of the original. And there is a gap in there. So uh, like the original, if you wanted to add a driver sitting in gasket, I don't think this guy will fit, but maybe some of the smaller, newer little guys will fit in there. And Gromit's transformation is pretty simple too. You just flip this piece like that. And these little pieces right here will peg up into here just to hold it securely. Again, the design reminds me a lot of those Constructicons from Combiner Wars that I just reviewed. And then to complete the look so that it's a little bit more interesting than just this thing, you take these cannons and you can 
put put them in the holes in the top, which sort of recreates the look of the original because he the original one if you don't do this cannon thing that I did he has cannons on the sides here and so now he has cannons on the side there as well and there's a look at Gromit past and present so Gasket and Gromit combine to form Cog the robot and this is interesting on the back of the box it shows Gasket and Gromit combining in vehicle mode too. So all you need to do is connect this tab right here into this slot right here. It's a very loose connection, but it holds them together and it makes them look more like a vehicle. The problem with it, I guess, is it, it just looks like a robot laying down. And that is one of Fortress Maximus's problems in battleship mode. Fort Max just looks like he's laying down. So uh, it's actually kind of fitting that his little buddy would also have that. And I've never done this before, but after seeing this guy combine this way, uh, you can do the same thing to the original one. And that looks even more like just a dude laying down with his arms up on his chest. But it's kind of cool that after all these years, a new mode for Gasket and Gromit in their vehicular mode. And the other gimmick for Cog, Gasket, Gromit, is that they are a weaponizer. So you can actually take off all of these weapons. And he's, um, he sort of bends at the shoulders here uh, as part of his transformation. And when you fold these in, I think we need to turn the head out of the way for this part. You can fold those in and there's a little tab right here that comes out. So this becomes a gun and you can add it to other siege transformers or the peg is the same size as the peg they used on the original guys. So you can actually use it as an upgrade for original transformers and you can power this thing up too there's pegs everywhere reminds me a little bit of centurions actually the uh, freedom of being able to put anything anywhere you can really soup this thing up to be a super cannon you can turn these arms around all sorts of different options here pop this on top of here this is obviously going to be very front heavy, but if you want him to have a super blaster, then uh, good old Cerebros isn't going to be much of a pacifist pulling this gigantic beast of a blaster. And the same goes for Gromit as well. You can Pull these parts out. Uh, this has another peg there, so this can just basically be another simple looking blaster. Fits in there quite nice. It doesn't feel like it's going to damage your figures when you pop it in there. And then these legs have these this looks like it should move these red parts but they're just painted on there but there's pegs everywhere so you can turn that like that revealing cannons cannons and more cannons and you can I don't know there's all sorts of different options you can add it to this one instead maybe this way this way there's just all sorts of options and it does remind me a lot of Centurion so I'm curious and I've got a Jake Rockwell Centurions figure here I, I was just curious to see if these pegs actually fit and they don't uh, the holes on the Centurions are too small too bad because that would have been really cool whole new weapon system for 
the Centurions. So that was basically the premise. Just peg things on and power a guy up. One guy who does have compatible ports though is this guy. So you can plug this in here into the forearm. And then over on the other side, maybe we can pop these ports into here. This is really cool. Being able to just do whatever you want. Turn that into a wild looking gun. And the cool thing about popping these onto Fortress Maximus is if you put these on a smaller robot, they're going to probably fall forward or back. That's not going to happen with Fortress Maximus. He's going to remain the same level of sturdiness regardless of what you put on him. Or you can use this port up on his shoulder and pop that up there. Nice fit to it. And the great thing about the handle up there is that it's actually posable. So if you use this one as a shoulder cannon, you actually have some variance. You can have him shooting airborne foes as well. And another port down here. This guy is covered with ports, so maybe stick this one down here. A little extra cannon fire for the cannon. That's really cool. And even one on the back. You've got this one left over, so you can just plug that like that for storage or you can take the forearm one from over here and give him a little firepower from behind so that he can watch his back for Decepticon attacks. These are all posable too so they can point any which way you want. And you can do the port gimmick on COG as well. So if you don't want him holding his guns, you can have them on his forearms. Or they can be down on his legs for storage. Or another cool look is putting them on his back for storage. So Centurions are not back yet, but the, uh, the concept is with the new Transformers, and I think that's awesome. Giving people the option of how they want to display the, the weapons on their figures, that's pretty cool. So that's Transformers Siege Cog. Very well-made figure, great sculpt, cute, and he goes perfectly with his big buddy, Fortress Maximus. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd mistake.